In this video we're going to put uh, all of our knowledge we've learned over the last few videos into one video and create this 3D mesh based on our 2D drag. So what do we know so far? Well we know that the shape of our mesh is going to be like this. It's going to be a cube but one side of the cube is going to be squashed right down and as the field of view increases on the camera the, the 3D mesh will increase in scale at the far clip plane. So this is the shape. It will be a lot more dress, uh, dramatic than this so this bit will increase a lot more but that's going to be the shape. We know where the points are. We know how to create this cube by using procedural primitives in Unity and all we need to do now is update this shape on every frame based on our 2D drag. And there's a way we can do this. I'm going to do it all in this video. Okay so before I um, jump into the code I'm going to do some setup here instead of creating a mesh from scratch I'm going to actually drop one into the scene and every time we drag that mesh will be manipulated so in the future we can instantiate it in code but just to keep things simple I'm going to actually create the mesh in the game firstly so let's just go to empty game object and I'm going to call this empty game object and drag select mesh this is going to be the mesh object so what do we need on it we need a mesh filter, we need a mesh uh, renderer so we can see it and I'm also going to drag on a material so I think my white paint is a good one so far because I've attached that material, that texture to it so let's just go back to our drag mesh and drag on this white paint so we'll be able to see this mesh in the game and we've also saved our create box mesh to create the box itself so I'm going to open that for a sec I'm going to do this in our mouse script because our mouse script controls the drag and selecting and things and it seems to be the right place to do this. And we, all we need to do is define a couple more public variables. So a public game object drag select mesh. Okay, so this is going to be the mesh we've just created. Simple thing to do. And, and the next thing is a public game object. Um, I'm going to call this pointer. I'm going to explain what the pointer does in just a sec. but. I'm just going to jump into the um, mouse script and attach the uh, the drag select mesh. So here it is. I'm just going to drag it in. Okay. So and because there's only one instance of this mesh in the entire game, we could also find it in the start method. But I'm just going to stick to doing this, and I'm going to leave the pointer blank, so nothing's going to be here. Okay. So on the start method, I'm going to make a new start method here. Void start. I'm going to declare this pointer as a new game object. So we just say pointer equals new game object. Simple as that. So this is going to be a game object that can float around the scene and move position and rotation and things. So now would be a good time to explain what the pointer object does. Well, we're going to manipulate the pointer to let's pretend the pointer is just like a fly that flies around the scene. This pointer is going to go to each point, and when it arrives at those points, we're going to record the exact position and. Uh, they're going to be the, the vertices. The pointer 3D position at these points will be the vertex points. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. So we're just going to basically reset the pointer at the lower left of the planes and then just kind of manipulate it to go to the correct position of the planes. And that is the pointer object. We'll use that in a sec. Um, so before I continue, I'm going to actually create this 3D mesh in our scene. And to do that, I'm going to make a new function. Um, I'm going to call it private void create drag box mesh. Let's just call it that. And I'm just going to copy and paste most of the code that was in our create box mesh uh, scripts. We've done it on the start method so I'm just going to copy and paste everything so we've got a cube to work with in the game. Let's just copy and paste all this so we want all that. And right at the top where it says get components there is we can say drag select mesh dot get component and then we're going to get the mesh filter and uh, another really important thing is that we actually place this object in the origin of our scene so so let's just do that now so it's right in the origin because this po our pointer object will get the position of these points in world units in world 3d space and we're going to apply that to the mesh in this object so this also needs to conform to 3d space that's why we place it at the origin zero 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 and we're going to update the uh, mesh in every frame we drag using another method. Um, this one's going to be a public void. This one's going to be called update drag box mesh. So this is the method we update the mesh based on our drag, our 2D drag. 
this is the all-important method we're going to be working with. Okay, so where are we going to call this? Well, I was thinking it's a good idea to call it in the late update function after we clear the units in the drag. So, so at the top of the late update function, we can say, well, if the user is dragging, we only want to update this mesh if the user is in fact dragging, then simply update the drag box mesh. Simple as that, so we know exactly what's going to happen. But we need a mesh to update to begin with, so I'm going to go to the start method and uh, below the pointer object I'm just going to say create drag box mesh, call that method so we have one to play with and if I jump back into the scene we should clear any errors we had when we were saving along the way um, we should have a mesh here in the, in the origin to play with so let's just hop to the scene view there it is, so this is our mesh all we need to do now is actually edit each of these vertices to correspond to the position of the 2D drag and the camera Okay, so this is where we dive into the method, the update drag box mesh method to actually achieve this. Um, if I can find it, where is it? So this is the creation one. Let's get rid of that. So let's just replace this method here, update drag mesh. I'm going to put it next to the create mesh. Okay, so this updates our mesh. So how are we going to get our vertices with our 3D box? Well. I'm just going to drag out my game bot, my game window so I can show you guys. So as you can see, the screen width and the screen height has exactly the same proportions as our near clip plane and our far clip plane and our camera's field of view. So I can prove this to you in real time. As I drag the the game window, make it thinner and thinner and thinner, the uh, the clip planes also become thinner and thinner. So we we know by this that this coordinate system, the 2D drag and our camera share exactly the same proportions and the same ratios. So what do I mean by that? Well if I jump into my my diagrams we can easily just we can say like this is going to be our 2D, 2D coordinate system in our game. Okay so this is 2D coordinate system. Let's say I'm dragging here so my drag is going to be like this. This is my drag. But if we get to the near clip plane we can actually copy and paste this and it will be exactly the same in our near clip plane so those artifacts are quite annoying in Photoshop but never mind. So now this can be exactly the same size as my 2D screen height and screen width. So this is the screen Okay, and this can be, for example, my clip plane, my camera clip plane, whether it be the near clip plane or the far clip plane, it's going to share exactly the same uh, proportions. Okay, guys. So by this, we can say, well, this this x position is going to be like 0 0.3 um, out of one. So one will be the full width and the full height, and uh, also the height will be around, I don't know, 0 0.25. And if we plug these values back into the 2D coordinate system, it will also be 0 0.25 and 0.3. Okay, so from this we can just work out using the 2D coordinate system the ratios of each of the points, the X and the Y ratio from 0 to 1 and then just plug each of those ratios in our near clip plane and our far clip plane to work out the points of the camera. So I'm going to do this now just so you guys can understand it easier rather than skip to the next video. So the first thing I'm going to work out is 0 0.0 ratio. Okay, so this is going to be the top right, I think. Let's have a look. So the point zero is the top right. This is the one I'm going to work out for our drag. So we can store this in a vector 2 because our ratio will have an x and a y. Vector 2, point zero ratio equals new vector 2. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have been following along, but we know the width and the height of our drag because we stored it in our update function. We've got the box finish and the box start. So we've got the box finish, we've got the box start. And we can use these values to find out the ratio in, in relation to the screen width and the screen height. And that's okay because the screen width and the screen height is exactly the same proportion as the clip planes of our camera. So just the way things work. So by this we can say the point zero ratio is we can say the box finish dot x, we're working in the x, divided by the screen width times 0 0.01. Okay, and this value gets this gets a value between 0 and 100. So this divides it as a percentage, let's say 0% to 100%. Um, but we also need to times this value by 0 0.01 to get a value from 0 to 1. And as simple as that. So let's remove those uh, semicolon. And for the y, it's um, similar. 
we can say box finish dot y plus mathf absolute because we want this value in positive whether it's positive or negative we want the absolute value of the box height okay guys because the box finish is always going to be at the bottom uh, the bottom right so the box finish is always going to be at point 3 so we need to move it back up again so that's why we want the positive value of the box height and uh, we can close this off divide it by the screen height um, times 0.01 gets a value between 0 and 100 times it by 0 0.01 again and then we've got a value between 0 and 1 okay guys so the box start is 0 0.1 and the box finish is 0.3 okay but so we've just basically worked out 0 0.0 by using the x value of the script box finish and then we've basically plus the box height to the box finish to get the y position okay so feel free to watch this video again if you need to understand all this theory but it does work okay that's point the point 0 ratio and we just need to work out the ratios for point 1, 2 and 3 because point uh, 4, 5, 6 and 7 will share the same ratios as 0, 1, 2 and 3 okay so vector 2 point 1 ratio equals new vector 2 and this is very simple point the 1.1 one point one ratio because this is the box start so we can just get the put the box start and the box height x and y values and convert them into a percentage or a value between 0 and 1 so in this case it would be box start dot x divided by screen width times 0 0.01 gets a value between 0 and 100 times by 0 0.01 again gets a value between 0 and 1 okay and because this is 0 0.1 we can copy and paste this and instead of x we can put y and instead of screen width we can put screen height okay that works out that ratio okay let's move on to point uh, 2 now vector 2 point 2 ratio equals new vector 2 so for point two, point two is the lower left. So we can say again box start x divided by the same thing, the screen width times point zero one f, point zero point zero one f. But the box, um, the y value, we need to be a bit clever, more clever here. We can say box start y, okay, and then we're going to minus the the absolute value of the box height. So box height. So we started off at the box start, which is point 0.1. Now we're going down to point 0.2. So we do, do box height, then we can divide it by the screen height times point 0.01 again, point 0.01. Okay, so that's point 0.2. And the last one we need to do here is point 0.3. So vector 2, point 0.3 ratio, new vector 2. So point 0.3, let's have a check. The point 0.3 is at the bottom right, so we can start off at the box finish, and the box finish is actually point 0.3. So in this case, it would be box finish x, and the same thing. So screen width 0.01, 0.01f, and the same thing in the y position. So copy and paste box finish y screen height. Get rid of the comma. And that, those are our ratios, guys. So these, these we can plug these ratios in our clip plane points and work out the position in 3D space. But I think I'll leave that for the next video. I want to leave it here because I want the subjects of this mate this video to be the ratios. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me or leave a comment below if you don't understand this. And feel free to watch the video again. Um, and if you if you can send me a message I can maybe explain it a bit better if you don't understand so we can take the ratios of the screen space now and plug them in with our near clip plane and our far clip plane plugging exactly the same values then we can work out our 3D drag thanks for watching the video guys hopefully see you in the next video